facts, those little nasty things that divide the way people are from the, pay, the way people would like to be. Um, the facts are, are unpopular in times of crisis uh, because they tell us that there is something different from what we would like. Uh, we are complaining a lot about facts because they are too many and so there is this uh, uh, filter failure thing and information overload. We are complaining about facts because they are difficult to tell which are true, which is not true. We are complaining about facts uh, in terms that they are less useful than they used to be for making us uh, better. Uh, we are complaining a lot about facts. We don't like facts. We seem to like much better opinions. Um, there was this uh, senator, democratic senator in the States that uh, said um, that everybody is entitled to his own opinions but not to his own facts. And I like very much that sentence uh, because it uh, de declares the possibility of facts being uh, the same reality in which everybody lives and then divide in terms of opinions. Uh, if we shared the same idea of facts, we would have a sort of public sphere yeah, it seems like I'm talking about prehistory, uh, but it used to be like that. And um, some people complain about the fact that there is no more public sphere. There is no more public sphere because uh, we decided to give much more importance to opinions than to facts. Um, why is that? Well, we are uh, understand, fact, understanding facts uh, means understanding the context. Um, so the relation between facts. Understanding the context, co context means understanding the media uh, on which we link facts together. Understanding the media means understanding society, and the opposite is also true. Um, we, we create our society by the narrative that we create on the media, and that the media by its own structure creates. And in the structure of the media, facts are linked. Yeah? Okay, okay, and um, and so facts, context, uh, media, society. We don't understand why facts are so unpopular without understanding society and the way society uses technology to deal with the contextualization of facts. Um, so. The major problem when we deal with facts and, and we complain about echo chambers, um, the, the crisis of fact checking, uh, all the things that we are going to discuss during these two days um, is not about technology. It's about the evolution of society in uh, the echo cultural niche that we created. And the real problem is how we will create the next ecocultural niche in which we develop our life. We are in, an, in, a, in, a, in a media ecology environment and we develop and evolve in our niche. We look for comfort zones and these are echo chambers. Um, 
Walter will talk about that tomorrow a lot, but it was clearly described by Elliot Pas Pariser on, uh, with the filter bubble, and you know all that. Um, there are these eco-cultural niches in which society develops, adapts, evolves, and that can change sometimes to create new um, eco-cultural niches in which there will be a new adaptation. Uh, it happens like that, and, uh, and, 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 and all goes to the evolution of society and the relationship between the media ecology and, and society. So, um, the crisis of facts is mainly the crisis of the technology that we use to deal with them, the crisis of uh, uh, the, uh, our ability to understand them, contextualize, but it's mainly the uh, consequence of the evolution of society and the relationship between society and media. Uh, we used to have a society in which facts were related to the way people uh, were able to grow. It was the mass society, society in which mass media, mass production, mass consumption after the Second World War. Uh, it was a society in which everybody was almost average. The most part of society was in the average part of society. Uh, it was not probable to be in one of the corners of the Gaussian bell. And the most part of the people was in the average. And the average was a way to, to talk about hierarchy. Um, most people were average. We were uh, in a mass society. Mass meant everybody works, cons consumes, produ uh, helps the production. Almost the same way, using a few mass media to know things. If you look in uh, Google Books and you search mass, you'll find that it was very much used in books all over the world uh, during the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. And at the end of the 70s, it almost disappears from books. Mass, the mass idea, the society, mass society, mass consumption, mass production, and mass media stops being used uh, at the same, uh, with the same amount of uh, uh, attention at the end of the 70s. From that point on, you look always in, in Google, Google Books, you find that we use more and more the word target. Society is no more organized on the average, uh, around the average, is organized in clusters that media people call target. In every target, media people creates and helps creating um, a reality that adapts and is easy to be and to, to, to understand by the people that they think live in that target. The target is a, a marketing concept to divide society in pieces, uh, into, in, in, inside them people are similar, but they are very different from people that are in other targets. And since media creates these targets, the vision of the society that is um, developed in, in every target becomes more and more different from the vision that is in other targets. Uh, old people, young people, rich people, uh, less rich people, um, workers, not workers, students, all targets, all different visions, different narratives, a different 
business model for media, different con con contextualization of facts, different facts. Um, as this kind of idea grows and develops, the best that a marketing guy could do is to find a way to use the concept of target in a, a, a more and more precise way. And the, more, the most precise way to define a target is to see a single person as the target. And we talk about personalization of information as if it was the best way to target information possible. But this is a way to divide the vision of people from the idea of having the same facts to deal with. Because the narrative that personalized media develops is not about having the same facts to deal with, but is having the facts that are personally very interesting for every person. And since this is done by a technology that uses social relationship to decide what is the best personalized information, then we see the development of algorithms that uh, uh, personalize information and create echo chambers. In echo chambers, if a fact uh, is, gives a different vision of the world than the one that is uh, uh, suggested by the mostly shared opinions in that uh, echo chamber, then the fact is rejected, is not understood. That's the same as what happens in newspapers when a fact is not in the frame in a, uh, uh, that of the moment. If we're, you know, the notion of frame is very common. If, if the frame for now is, for example, that Italy is in decline, then uh, a fact that is about uh, um, entrepreneurs that uh, uh, close a company is in target and it becomes important if uh, the fact is about something that is okay or very good, then is out of frame and then is, uh, has less importance in the, in the journalism uh, of the moment. So that is uh, clearly a, a way to, to describe what happens in echo chambers too. It's slightly different, but it's not that different. So what can we do? We seem to have stressed to the uh, uh, extreme possibility, the idea of uh, dividing society in targets and then dividing targets in p people, single individuals and personalized information. And we see that uh, we create different visions of the world, different opinions on facts, so different that we don't share the same facts anymore. We don't know which facts are true and not true. We discuss about uh, whether Obama is Muslim or not. We, we know, for example, that 25% uh, of Americans think that um, the sun uh, rotates uh, around the, the, the earth. You know, there are different views, uh, visions of the world and, and different uh, environments in which people don't share the same facts. So what can we do? Well, I'm, I'm going to end this uh, talk that is such imp so much important for, for me uh, that is uh, really a, a more a question mark than, than, a, than a real speech. And uh, it's going to end with uh, question marks too. And I hope we will discuss about those after uh, I finish. But it's one more minute or two.
um, about what we can do. It's, it's not that we should do something technological. It's not that we should do something uh, epistemological. It's not that we should change society per se. It's the, the whole set of these things together. We need to understand what's going on, have a consciousness of what's going on, and work with a lot of patience to uh, get out of this situation and find out a new way to understand reality. It's not thinking to go back to where we were. Society has developed and it's no more there. It's, it's, not, it's very different from what it was. Um, so what can we do? I suggest to uh, compare this situation with uh, things that succeeded in terms of improving quality in the last decades. One thing that was interesting was in the consumer sector, protection sector, when we decided to uh, describe the way uh, consumer goods are done before selling them. So, the idea could be to uh, rule that we will share uh, information, news, and ideas only saying how they are done, how they were done, where they come from, who has done them, and by which means, as tomato soup. Um, this could be uh, useful to uh, stress the epistemological uh, content of facts that we deal with. And um, it could be used to create a different platform or at least different angles of the platform that uh, we use for sharing facts that the most important uh, vision is the ecological vision. We uh, uh, used uh, uh, at least 50 years to understand that uh, uh, pollution was bad and uh, was not uh, external to the production system. Um, it is clear that uh, polluted information is internal to the system of the media and is not an externality that we can deal later with. Um, it's uh, something that uh, creates disasters, and if you want, the, the major disaster of the last year, uh, the, 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 the Chernobyl of the media ecology was the Brexit. Um, it was demonstrated by the economists the way misinformation was used to uh, help uh, the Yes, We Leave uh, campaign. Um, and it was uh, a real uh, comparable to, to any kind of uh, pollution. Um, but if we don't uh, see how to deal with this uh, problem now, it is only because we just started understanding this kind of uh, problem. Uh, in the 50s and 60s, we polluted the world without understanding how big the damage was. Uh, now we are damaging ourselves, polluting our minds, but we don't really understand how we are doing it. Um, so thinking and talking about this is the beginning of understanding and having a better consciousness. Um, an ecological movement for the media is needed. Thank you. Okay. So what is the question? <laughs> Anybody want to comment? Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I'm going to present. Uh, do, you want to, do you want to get on stage so okay. we can ever. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's going to be easier for the camera. Isn't it? Okay. No, I mean, I totally agree in, what, in a sense on what we are focusing today. The problem is that sometimes is missing the perspective. Um, actually, what is leading to the emergence of echo chambers is not just uh, the media, it's not uh, just the way information are presented, it's uh, a combination of factors. First of all, is the large amount of information we can access to, their diversification, because they are pretty heterogeneous, and what is driving such a configuration, such a segregation, is the confirmation bias, a confirmation bias that is strictly related with the comfort zone. In a sense, we are some way exposed to a reality that is beyond our possibility of understanding. This is, this, I mean, the situation is like this since the, the beginning of humanity. And it's not a matter of now, it's not an actual problem. This information has always existed. Since, um, since from Pompeii, we get uh, the effect of false rumors, gossip influencing the policy making, and, and some way the segregation of people that share the same narrative. The problem now, now nowadays, the problem is the uh, easy way in which we can access information and the, easy, the possibility the unlimited possibility to reach everyone that uh, is following that information. So basically, the information, the narrative, is a kind of forum, agora, in which we will find like-minded people. And the discussion between like-minded like people create polarization. So we end up in a more polarized position than before. And in the case of Brexit, we just uh, pub uh, published uh, pub um, a paper this Monday on the Brexit, and we analyzed basically all the information that were uh, the, the way people interact and comment on information reported on the mainstream media on the U in UK, and we found actually that uh, the problem is the backfire effect. It's not the way we are creating and framing the story. Is that there is a gap between what people is expecting and what uh, the mainstream society, the institutional society, is leading. In, in fact, we found that uh, there are two different echo chambers, pro and leave, no, no overlapping at all, and uh, the perception of the mainstream, if you look at the way uh, mainstream media present notions to the, to the public, to the audience, is uh, the most of the time, with respect to the leave, is positive. The reaction on the comments is always negative. So there is this distance, and if you measure, actually, the two echo chambers and the differences in their topics, so basically the core narrative, you find, actually, an extreme division in the perception. So media, media, mainstream media, lost the power to inform, because, because we are living in this disintermediated environment. And, uh, third point that actually is creating the hell of misinformation is narcissism, because we know that when we are online, we try to maximize the number of likes. This is true for journalists, this is true for scientists, this is true for everyone. And everyone now can have a blog, Facebook is a blog, we can express our opinion, and we are driving basically a stereotype, we are creating a virtual ego that doesn't fit reality, and in that kind of uh, way of framing the story, we are ending up in the post-truth society. Fact doesn't matter at all. So, if we, if we try to stay in his uh, interpretation where the argument is information is uh, polluted and we don't realize this. Actually, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, it's not that the information is polluted. Is uh, the uh, many actors that are playing now in, in the information system that actually are polluting everything. Another study that we did is on the overall consumption of news uh, on the news media on 400 millions of users, so beyond statistics. Uh, we found that actually uh, doesn't matter the, the, the way information is framed. People just fo focus. Oh, but, I mean, it, it was a metaphor, if I understand well. Uh, it's just like pollution in the in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. led to the ecologic movement. So we were polluting without realizing that we were polluting. 
and then we realized that uh, we were putting this stuff everywhere and this was not good for society as a whole. I guess that, uh, if I understand well, the argument was that uh, we are sort of living something similar. We're living in a situation where what is happening around us is wrong in many ways and uh, we need to figure out uh, how to deal with it. Uh, Julia Cesare, let's just have a... So I like the metaphor of uh, polluted information very much. And I also like the uh, observation about how uh, the idea of mass uh, society, media, and consumption and production has evolved. I think I could add a piece to this, and it is how we consume information, or how actually we produce information because it's kind of symmetric now, the, the situation. So we went uh, from a society that was uh, used to grow its own food to a society that goes to the supermarket and has to learn different way to look at the food because we knew what we were growing. Now we need to know where it comes from. For information, I would argue that we're going the reverse path. There was someone preparing all the information for us, mass media, and we all had the same uh, view. And we are going back to the, our ability to pick the information or to search for the information or to actually grow your information because when you uh, select uh, the people you want to follow on Twitter or on other media, you are just growing your set of information that you are feeding yourself. So, we don't have, uh, or most people don't have this uh, uh, ability to deal with growing their own information. And we probably need to grow tools to understand what's useful, what's not useful, which uh, behavior are constructive and which are not. Actually, we happen to have a, a keynote tomorrow about uh, creating your own truth. Um, maybe do you want to? Anticipate a little bit of it. Okay. Let's introduce you and Sample. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I won't do all of my talk tomorrow now. Um, but no, just totally agree with the last comment and also Luca's points. And I, I was trying to find a book to refer to in the talk tomorrow. I failed, which I read about 10 years ago. But the, the writer was basically saying life would be so much better if we could just go back to the days when the news told us the truth. Um, you know, you can't, and, and you can't put the lid back on this can of worms. And I was also slightly wary with the, with the first comment that we fall into the trap of talking about most people. And we're still sort of used to this idea of most people mass, which allows us to then think somebody else needs to sort this out. Um, but one of my slides tomorrow I, I, is a chapter in my book, which I called We All Have a Volume Control on Mob Rule. And if we don't like things like Trump or Brexit, it's because not enough of us stood up on Facebook or on Twitter or wherever else and said that's not true. Um, now, the pitch tomorrow in the talk is that we need to get better at working out what we think is true. And that's really hard because, as you said, we're not, we're not trained to do it. We're not encouraged to do it. We find it hard to do it. Thank you. Um, Benjamino? Um, I think that um, Luca gave us a great question, but uh, I'd like to, to give him another one. Uh, so uh, maybe you, some, some of us read um, a book by um, Professor Jarvis uh, some years ago, What Would Google Do? And, and so what would Luca do if you were Google? Because um, it, at this point, um, we know that Google is working like, is trying to, to be neutral in like totally. They, they can't be, but they, they tend to be. And um, they are also working with some newspapers, uh, among of them La Stampa, where I work now, uh, to, to build um, 
what was what is called the trust project that uh, obviously look you know about this uh, that is meant to uh, use some metadata inside the articles and uh, try to verify, try to propose to, to, to readers verify the articles uh, with, with the, like the same blue icon that you can find on Twitter or, fav or Facebook. So not very long from now, you will read about an article verified and, um, and that's a part of it. Well, Facebook, uh, which we, m most of us uh, in this room at, at least uh, use, but uh, at the same time we, we blame in, in, some, in some part for, for the eco chambers effect and all we, all we know, uh, for a little time wasn't neutral for, for a thing, for, for a feature, they just kicked off it because it was too uh, risky for them, for their business. And that was the part uh, with uh, some trending news that uh, apparently they had a team inside and so that was an editorial team. Um, Apple has uh, its own system, Apple News, and when you scroll left on your iPhone, basically you find news selected from humans not not an algorithm let's say humans um, with with some help from algorithms because they know where you are and so it's more probably uh, it's more common you get some news about Trieste if you are, if you live in Trieste so and and I can see their point of view and I understand they are very high profitable business, they are uh, public companies, so I, I think I, I would do what they are doing because it, otherwise it's very risky. But <laughs> what do you do? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> yeah, they, what are they? They are technology companies, are they utilities or are they media companies? Um, if they are technology companies, they live in the um, cloud channel world in which they manage bits and don't care about meaning. As Claude Shannon said when in, in his paper described uh, the problem of communication, he said the problem of managing and engineering communication is to bring the fact from point A to point B. Sometimes information has a meaning, but we don't care about that. Uh, we want to create a technology that uh, is independent from meaning. <laughs> so if, if they are information technology companies, then they are independent from meaning and they are free to do whatever they want. Um, that is a, 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 a small piece of time in the development of the internet. And it, it's not the future. Um, when people will be conscious of the meaning of algorithms and the way algorithms uh, influence our sharing of information, uh, people will demand things. Uh, and uh, these kind of companies that we need to use because they are uh, something that we cannot live without, they grew, grew to be uh, platforms that we need to, to work with in some countries of the world, not everywhere. Um, then people will try to rule as uh, rule them as uh, utilities, uh, just as it has been done for networks, for the watering of uh, electricity, phone companies. So they will be ruling about them if they are utilities. 
And it will be kinds of, of rulings like uh, interoperability, uh, that kind of stuff, as it was done by, for, for the telephone companies. If they are media companies, also they will be ruled. Right? Somebody will ask for them to uh, help their users understand the meaning of what they are telling us. So uh, there will be some kind of uh, verification system. Uh, they can do it proactively, proactively, like Google is doing. And uh, Google is facilitated in doing this because they have, um, a, 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 they, they still like the web. And the different kind of people that do the web. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they like the web. Uh, Facebook doesn't like the web. I mean, it, it's not the web, about the web. It, it is about their platform, and that's it, almost it. So they like very much the phone. They like their platform. They are trying to convince uh, countries to accept a different kind of internet that is uh, able, it enables people to go only to the sites that they decide is they should look at with the basic, uh, free basic uh, service. So Facebook at the moment is not going to be interested in verifying and uh, so they want to be a technology company. They want to stay a technology company. They fight for being thought uh, as a free technology company as any other. But it's not the end of the story. Napster was a technology company, but the ruling of the media sector made that they were a media company and they were ruled, ruled out of, <laughs> of market. Um, I guess that this is going to be linked to the way uh, competition and lobbies work, but also as uh, we grow our consciousness to the demand of people. And we will demand transparency of algorithms, uh, less asymmetry in the control of data, which is the new way to talk about justice. Uh, and uh, we will ask for a better environment in the media ecology world. Um, and we will understand how to deal with this demand when we will understand that exactly as we did with the natural environment, we will understand that the individual gesture has an impact to the system, is important. And when at the same time we understand that the quality of the environment is very important for any individual, that circle, which is not the Eggers one, but the ecological one, will grow a consciousness that will create the demand for this technologies company to behave uh, differently.